What is wealth? Welcome to Philosopher's Corner. I'm John. What is wealth? The standard definition of wealth is an abundance of resources, material possessions that have monetary value or are valued in exchange. So, and an abundance of it. So, that seems pretty simple. So, an abundance of material possessions or resources that have high monetary value or value in exchange. So, what are the philosophical ramifications of wealth? Well, if a person possesses wealth, they have an abundance. And we know that that is measured in relation to others in a sociological unit. Because something having a monetary value implies that there's an economy that's being had. Because if a person is simply by themselves in solitary in a desert island sort of situation, material possessions and resources have no trade value because there's no one to trade with. So we can already see that in terms of how we define wealth, it's an assessment of the potentiality for exchange with other people. So it's not necessarily the way it's defined an inherent property. Having a lot of material possessions, if they have utility to the individual, can still have the same effect that one thinks of of wealth. If they have many things that make a person's life easier and they cater to the senses and it makes life more enjoyable, then they can actually be living in luxury, in solitude. Which is another thing that people really think about when they think about wealth. When we think about wealth, our mind tends to jump straight to the personal enjoyment of wealth, which tends to be luxury. It's not always luxury, but it tends to be the idea of luxury. The nice car, the nice house, the nice things to comfort our senses, the peace of mind that some people get from wealth, not everybody. And that can be attained in solitude, but that's different than this type of wealth. The type, the standard definition for wealth implies that the abundance of the possessions or resources have their inherent value in the potentiality for exchange with others. And that others have also, in some way, whether consciously or unconsciously, assigned a trade value to the possessions or resources, which can include the talents of the individual, in relation to the rest of society. So... There's many ways to look at it. So there's the from the individual perspective, when an individual has wealth, there's, of course, the great idea in society that access to wealth, the access to the ability and the opportunities to incur wealth are one of the strongest metrics of a just and equitable society. That seems reasonable. It seems as though if you're going to have a truly free society, then everyone should have a fair shot at accumulation of material possessions, resources, and whatnot. Now, of course, in that discussion, especially in America, there's always attempts to not only make the playing field level or make it so that people can have equal opportunity to have a chance to obtain wealth, 
but also they have found that certain individuals not only attain wealth, but they attain so much through various means that there need to be regulations so that they don't have a, an undue effect on the rest of the population, that their wealth doesn't turn into too much power. So wealth in and of itself is a bit of power. That's undeniable. But the synergy of wealth, when, you, when the, through the power and alchemy of organization, an organization is an extremely powerful force, through that synergistic network of organization of wealth, whatever wealth is already in the realm of power can be amplified into power. One can reconstruct and reorganize their wealth so with the aim of it being powerful, which is kind of a, it's a whole other force that you can derive out of wealth. There are many forces that can be derived from wealth. So, if you have an abundance of material possessions and you have an abundance of resources, and remember, we can include like talents. So if a person has an abundance of intellectual ability, an abundance of heartfelt ability, if they have extraordinary talents in any direction, in any realm, any genre, whatever of life, they can bring that to bear, you know, and that, that can include like spiritual perspective, intellectual perspective, uh, people skills, anything you can really think of as a talent. So they can bring that to bear with the more traditional material wealth, just the resources in general, be it uh, money, precious metals, real estate, automobiles, any, any type of material, highly valued material possessions in Toto, right? So when you bring those together, then you have a whole you have a whole nother level of of wealth and there are derivatives that can be taken out of wealth the wealth can then be focused in different ways to have different effects in the reality and it's always in relation to other people and there are many things that we attribute high monetary value to because they have a potential to be valuable to other people in the society and so therefore they have a potential trade value whereas if you view those people in solitude a lot of those items actually have no value the monetary values it's simply the perception of the potential trade value within the society hey, if you're on a desert island and you have a picasso good for you doesn't really matter. You know, if you're on Fifth Avenue in Manhattan and you've got an apartment and you've got a Picasso, well, good for you. <laughs> that's, that's a whole different story. Um, so wealth, it's an abundance of material resources, valuable things, talents coming to bear, and it's a goal for a lot of people. It's a real goal. And I think it's an unconscious goal for a lot of people, which steers a lot of emotional interaction for people without them necessarily knowing it. And for a lot of people with them knowing it, it can be difficult if one of your goals in life is wealth. And as you get along in life, you don't have it. And then, you meet or see other people who have obtained it. That elicits strong emotions from a lot of people. And also there's no real justification for people who are in that position when they also meet people who have inherited the wealth or they have gotten it through means that don't correlate to their personal work being put in to obtain it and so that can further exasperate things but it's a big factor in society wealth in general is a big it's a big factor because it drives a lot of social policies it drives a lot of social interactions it fuels almost every other derivative opportunity in society 
can be fueled off of wealth. Like literally anything, like mating, schooling, business opportunities, social opportunities, travel, peace of mind, spiritual studies, athletic endeavor, like literally anything because wealth can open up time for people. Wealth can open up security, confidence, opportunity. It can do all these things. Now, it's not guaranteed that wealth does that. There are numerous stories of people who have wealth and they're not cut out to handle it. It doesn't work for them. It, they haven't done the personal work to be able to handle the amount of energy and opportunities that it brings. And, you know, also being, if a person has wealth, then they can also be the object or the target of people who have not obtained it, or even if they have, it, it excites uh, negative emotions in those people. Wealthy people are always going to attract people who have, who, basically you know i've incited jealousy or envy or a whole list of other emotions into their field because of the great perceived value that they have control of and you know in the same vein that they're going to attract all sorts of people that want to do opportunistic things both good and bad it's sort of an absolute value it's just the wealth itself especially when it becomes known to others has a very attractive quality and it's sort of a treasure vault and because wealth is a confluence of different things, monies, items, talents, energies, perceptions, reputations, everything associated with it sort of becomes valuable to an extent. It becomes a very unpredictable energy to have at the core of someone's existence. And it becomes like a whole different philosophical factor in terms of how a person is perceiving their life how it influences what they do and how it influences how people view them. Right. And then there's different levels of wealth. You know, famously people say generational wealth. Well, that means that you have so much wealth that it's going to set your children up to be wealthy or possibly their children or further down the line. And then that changes all of the, that changes the consciousness of that family line. Because now instead of trying to figure out the basics on the uh, pyramid of needs, now they're towards the top of the pyramid. And that opens up a whole different life path and a whole different set of strategies, a whole different set of philosophies. It affects morals and ethics. Uh, presumably they have more responsibility to society. Whether they accept it or not it tends to be a topic of debate within wealthy families and you know just generally how does one when they're empowered with wealth what do they how do they handle the responsibility of that power and wealth doesn't stay secret for long in the modern world so there's an amount of exposure that comes that usually catalyzes the public responsibilities And, you know, obviously, when someone is wealthy, other people want to know how they did it. They want to know how to get it for themselves. And so that's another aspect of it is, okay, how much do you try to catalyze for other people, right? There's all these, when the wealth comes into a person, there's all these different questions and responsibilities that happen that need to be dealt with. And they kind of can't be avoided. It, it's almost in a sense that the wealth becomes its own job. It, be, it requires a lot of maintenance. It becomes its own resource network with its own synergy, its own derivative forces, and its own responsibility in general. You know, while also being able, obviously, to provide for whatever material comforts the owner of the wealth or the possessor of the wealth can imagine and needs. So, yeah, what is wealth? Uh, it's an abundance of material resources uh, and talents and resources. And 
a lot of people want it. <laughs> well, I hope you found this helpful. Uh, maybe you'll get wealthy. Who knows? And I hope you enjoy it and have fun. Thanks for spending some time here at Philosopher's Corner.